like I, I you know i don't mean to cut you off but nina turner's been on this great um jag and, and like listen this is when you at a certain point you need to like go against there's a there's a rot mm -hmm. on partisan democrat side and so like you see this fucking adam wren and like he might have just been a journalist taking pictures or whatever but the 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 responses to the scenes from east palestine where it's like fuck biden fisker saying on the fed all this you know right wing shit in turn every one of these folks deserves clean air clean food clean water and free health care i'm not sure what folks expected to see when they went this town but the pain and anger is um mm. can i switch to uh, this point yeah. for the neoliberals who say that the residents of that area deserve what they they are getting because they voted for president donald j trump it is abhorrent mm. this is about poverty this is about poor working class white people who are enduring some of the same things that poor working class black people endure, whether it's Flint, Cleveland, or Jackson, Mississippi. And so I want to lay it out that the cultist behavior in politics right now, it is a sin and a shame that when people are suffering to this magnitude, you got people who will fix their mouths, to quote my grandmother, to say that they are getting what they deserve. What they deserve is clean air, clean food, clean water. They deserve relief, both in the short term and also in the long term. It's that is just such a fun fundamental like that's just like a humanist point at, at a certain level too right that, like you know <laughs> like not to be all like starry eyed about democracy but the idea is that like we're supposed to be able to ask questions to the public right about who they want to be in charge and then at the end of the day we all live in the same country and we look out for each other right this kind of mentality that like oh people should be punished. And some people should be rewarded is so dangerous. Um, one, because what that fundamentally means is that, like, I'm fine with some working class class people be suffering um, because mm -hmm. they didn't make the same kind of gamut that I did. And also, I'm just going to say this. This might piss some people off. But also, like, look, if you grew up in an area that's blue and like Democratic and you're a Democrat, mm -hmm. you know, fine. Right. Yeah. But you act like you're somehow different from somebody who grew up in an area that's Republican historically. And they did the same thing that their parents were doing, the same thing that their neighbors are doing. Right. Like you fell into it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, yes. the moralism about it is, is really disgusting to me. Yes. And you know what it really is? And it's all these people that respond to Nina Turner. Well, I, well, I agree on an intellectual level. Will it change the way that they vote? And, all, and um, they should vote for those things. Uh, they vote for dirty air, blah, 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 like this sort of thing. What that is, really, is it, it, it victim blaming is like one thing to call it, but it's also cope. It's mm -hmm. cope for babies that basically don't want to admit that we don't live in a democracy. Yeah. Like that, that like voting actually doesn't solve all of these problems. It's going to take way fucking more than that. And particularly along the lines that we talk about, which is labor flexing their fucking muscle mm -hmm. and, and developing muscles. And so like all this stuff where it's like, oh, they should have voted. We see what happened. Like, like Joe, say one thing about Trump and the pettiness of him getting in office and saying, I'm just going to undo this shit because Obama did it, right? Biden should have been doing the same fucking thing about shit that mattered, right? Oh, yeah. And you can you can draw a distinction that way, but the, he, he didn't and he could have. And you have to ask why. And it's because there's actually not that big of a gap between the two parties. And that's why, like, like these, these Trump voters in Ohio recognize, that's why the Democrats uh, delivered for the fucking rail executives in December. Mm -hmm. Is, was there another Nina that you want to put up? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple here. Uh, um, you know, I think Nina has been excellent um, throughout this whole thing, like really articulating this position. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a really worthwhile. Just like really quick before we go to Nina, like, yeah. like, uh, like also like the vast majority of our audience is, is really, really smart. So like we're talking to people who already understand these kinds of things, but like on top of just like the fact that like we should be looking out for all working people in this country, this is the other promise of like Bernie Sanders and this kind of politics is that we can like unite people in a way that the democratic party never could. Yes. Right. They could never yes, exactly. do that. But like, you know, the potential with the Bernie Sanders style, like kind of politics, the potential with democratic socialist politics is that you can bring a lot of people together who might not fit into like a typical maybe even Democratic Party coalition or Republican Party coalition, right? Because when you speak to working people about working class issues, when you place things in the context of class war and we're living through it, we're literally, these are bombs being dropped on communities um, as a part of class war, right? That's what these are uh, when, the, we, when you're seeing these derailments. That's a person who controls a corporation saying, I don't give a shit about the dangers that this might mean for different people. Um, particularly places like East Palestine. Um, 
So I'm just going to pursue profit at the expense of safety, at the expense of sa- of, 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 of safety and just reasonable, rational management of these kind of systems, right? That's fallout from class war when you see these kinds of events, right? Um, and, um, you know, the, there there's nobody home in the sense of, 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 of like the government there being like a proper response because Biden doesn't want to touch it because Biden doesn't want to have to go into conflict with the railroad executives and Trump doesn't want to touch it because Trump doesn't want to go um, into conflict with railroad e- executives because they represent them. They don't represent you. Right. And the hope and the dream and the idea behind this kind of democratic socialist politics is that we can cut through that bullshit and recognize that the largest category of people in this country are working class people. And we are in the majority. And if we're able to be united, that we can actually get things done, because just hoping that there's this right constellation of certain members of the ruling class in the sense of the Democratic or the Republican Party that's going to be able to deliver for working people. It ain't going to happen. It hasn't happened. Um, And if we keep on waiting around for it, things are only going to get worse. Yeah, here's a few more uh, Nina uh, tweets. Trump voters don't deserve to have their towns uh, <laughs> poised appeared. And just look at these replies. Like, so they don't agree with you. I agree with you. And then scroll a little bit more. But come next election, will they vote anti-regulation candidates into office, right? Just um, Nina goes on to say the disconnect uh, to say put people over party to this, shake my head. You know, and she quotes somebody, voting has consequences. They reap what they sow. Like, again, this is, like I said, like, it's victim blaming, but it's also cope. Voting is not this. <laughs> voting is not this powerful. Otherwise, you know, we'd have universal health care in this country. They reap what they sow. Maybe next, maybe they'll start to understand that the next election put people over party rather than the inverse and hold their elected officials accountable. What, what like, what do they want to happen? In the sense of like, who is the fucking president right now? Who was in control of Congress for the past two years, right? If you don't want these yeah. things, if the argument is that like, well, we need to have the right people in this position and then these bad things won't happen, right? And then, well, the right people, according to you, were in that position and the bad things still happen. What the fuck do you want? Like, like the, 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 the idea behind it is cruel and sick, but we actually have the counterfactual like in front of us right now. Yes. What about yeah. the people in Hidalgo, Texas, who voted for Bottom? Right. And are now going to see, um, you know, healthcare disappear and food, uh, food stamps disappear. What about the people in Pennsylvania who voted for Biden and voted for the Democratic Party for the governor and the state house who are going to see those same effects hit them? Right. This is it's a nonsensical anti solidarity divisive argument that is so prevalent on people um, who instead of wanting to look at the folks in power, they want to look at the power lists, right? And that is the function of this yeah. division in American politics today, that instead of looking at the people who are responsible for these crises and getting mad at them and organizing against them and trying to build something, we instead are just pointing fingers and yelling at each other saying, you didn't line up in the way that I want you to. And also, I guess if you did do the right thing, you're also just going to get punished because the people who we say you should be supporting aren't going to do shit for you either yeah they did the best they can and it was not enough yeah exactly and you know again uh, just one final one nina um the likes of norfolk southern are buying politicians so they can keep poisoning our communities for a quick book buck there is no need for them nationalize the railroads and you know like like i think people make a point of like you know shared brown a little bit late to this too and like i i one i like Sherrod brown i think like as far as democrats go he's good but this is like in concert, right? Like the slow rolling of the response to this. Um, Buttigieg knew DeWine wasn't doing uh, this much, so he could didn't have to do this much. This is a concert, uh, mm-hmm. this sort of thing. And uh, so, you know, shout out to, uh, you know, folks like Nina who Democrats really <laughs> get upset by. And oop, oh, by the way, a victim of uh, APAC money. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, just to bring a full circle there. Well, look, the thing is, is that this isn't new. These parties both sort of settled. There's regional shifts, but in the sense of these two being the ma- these being the two major parties, this settles civil war era. Right. This has been what has sort of been in place. So generations upon generations of Americans have sort of been living through two ruling class parties. You know, eking it out against each other. And there's a lot of lessons, right? As I said earlier, the idea that basically, um, you know, one party control of, of the state 
meaning that things are going to get better for working people. Again, as I said, you mm -hmm. look at the states that are the most unequal in this country. It shows that like, well, yeah, look, it's great to have rent protections. It's great to have, you know, certain things. I'm not saying that there's no difference between Republicans and Democrats. But what I am saying is this idea that like what the goal, what the role of the left should be doing right now is to be sort of like lining up between one of these people as their fervent supporters is just wrongheaded and dangerous, right? Because this has been the fundamental characteristic of American politics because we have not had in a long time a socialist or a working class party. And I just wanted to go to Eugene Debs, who has a lot on this, and maybe we should just do a reading series on, on some of his stuff, Matt, because it's just like, you know, yeah. at the same time as when we were doing this Rosa Luxemburg, sometimes it can be inspiring and also frustrating to read people from the early 1900s writing about today. <laughs> Um, yeah, but this is, uh, from Eugene Debs, um, and I believe in 1910, uh, so long as workers are divided economically and politically, they will remain in subjection, exploited of what they produce and treated with contempt by the parasites who live out of their labor. The economic unity of the workers must first be elect, uh, affected before there can be any progress toward emancipation. The interests of the millions of wage workers are identical, regardless of nationality, creed, or sex. And if they will only open their eyes to the simple self-evident fact, the greatest obstacle will have been overcome and the day of victory will draw near. And the point that he's getting at here is that all of these things that are sort of set up to divide and prevent this possibility of working people uniting and recognizing the power that we have, the importance of that solidarity, um, and how effective and how afraid the people in power are of that reality happening. The more that we don't recognize it and fall into the traps that are being set and being active participants in those traps, you are working against yourself and your family yeah. and your community and your neighbors by playing into that thing. And people on the left and socials have to not only be better than that, we have to be a model for the people who were sort of bringing along with us and educating and showing a different way of doing politics and thinking about the country and thinking about the world. This is the way to affect change instead of attacking um, other people who are suffering because of this hellscape of international and uh, you know national capitalism in the United States of America. And it's, it's so, it's really like foundation. Like we talked, I forget what his name, the guy we talked with the St. Louis commune, but the great railroad strike of 1877, like rail yeah. rail. And basically like there was, that was when basically this sort of liberalism and the reactionaries like came together and is like, Oh yeah, we can't allow this sort of disruption. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to come together. And, and they're literally like, we're um, fighting the red skins, as they said out on the plains and the reds uh, in the urban areas. And, the newspapers, the mainstream newspapers, like your New York Times, your New York Heralds, they were conscious about that. We need to stop. Um, we need to stop occupying the South, and we need um, uh, units that can respond to strikes and respond to the frontier uh, <laughs> genocides that we're committing. And yep. we're in that exact same pattern now. And and like so, Buttigieg and like these sorts of folks, they they represent that that type of progressivism, and you know, it's progressive in the way that uh, we don't necessarily like. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> keep, you know, stay tuned to Love for Reckoning for more of that. I think, I, I, I think that for the most part, socials have sort of shook that off. Um, I hope, um, but I think that things could be made a lot more clear, um, because I think at, at a certain point, like the, the silence and the timidness that a lot of people have to sort of be explicit about what our critiques of like, Having secret criticisms of, of the people in power, right? Sometimes like quiet criticisms, you know what I mean? Like we're just doing it internally instead of sort of doing it publicly only helps to marginalize us, right? Because if people are fed up uh, with these folks in power, they should oh, be yeah. hearing that like, oh, wait, you know, these people who like, yeah, you know, the right's trying to get you worked up about or the people on Fox News are trying to get worked up about actually think. Um, very similar things to you about who's fucking you um, and and who, you know, who we should be actually targeting yes. and actually challenging and actually going into conflict with. Um, you know, it, it's a disservice to us to not be really explicit and open about these things in the terms of like careers or respectability 
right? Or, you know, being taken yes. seriously, right? At, at a certain point, what we're talking about is fundamentally shifting these dynamics. And I think people need to get more explicit and loud about these things yes. instead of sort of I, wanting to swim in the same waters as a certain kind of elite political class because you think maybe they'll give you some treats. I, I 100% agree. I mean, that's why like, I appreciate Nina Turner not like, mm-hmm. willing to like, you know, pick those fights and also like, you know, quote, tweet minor accounts to really drive home the point because it yeah. is, it's, it's really a sickness. It's disgusting. And it's a point, it's a great point to like intervene and A, like use it to discipline, but or differentiate an actual, you know, new political consciousness from, you know, these sorts of, uh, you know, milk toast freaks. Yeah. Well, talking about trying to build a, a stronger left we're going to jump over to the interview don't forget folks um that will be at the post game um right after that patreon.com slash left reckoning where matt has some pretty exciting um updates on landlord etiquette that you probably haven't been following and maybe should landlord tiktok baby a truly cursed uh, <laughs> uh area of the internet that uh i've been uh i've been privy to and also yeah we'll we'll do a little bit of maggie thatcher uh and william f buckley two prime time creeps uh in 1977 so uh see you after, at the end of the interview but this is a great interview uh, uh I, was, I was i watched it but uh sad i couldn't be there at the time but uh yeah we should get amina back 